Welcome to the Legacy Syndicate Podcast. What's going on? Episode number eight. eight. Number it. eight, yeah. Number, number eight, right? Eight episodes in already. Uh, I'm Jesse Moon. Mark Cassara here. And uh, I think we got something to talk about today. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Especially if you like to protect your money. Yeah, right? for sure. It, I mean, we wake up this morning. I woke up to Joe Biden walking on stage saying that the banks are safe. Banks are safe. Depositors are safe. Yeah. And then he walked off stage. And what happened next? And 930 hit and three banks dropped 75%. Just like that. I was like, that was weird. They're halting in the markets. They're actually halting trading right now. I heard Chuck Schwab, Charles Schwab got halted this morning. Right. From trading. They were one of the banks. They were one of the big banks. So if you don't know, if you've been living underneath a rock, uh, there's a couple banks that have uh, become insolvent and gone under. And uh, FDIC has taken over and they're going to guarantee people up to $250,000. And we really know what's going to happen after that. However, this is when the government, the nanny state steps in. The government said, don't you worry about a thing. We're going to take care of everything outside of the two hundred and fifty k. And they're not calling it a bailout, believe it or not. Correct. That President Biden said, this is not a government bailout, but what is it? Oh, well, I mean, if they're going to give them $25 billion. Yeah, they're bailing out the depositors. <laughs> they're bailing out uh, middle class America, which, you know, kudos on one hand. But at the same time, where's all that money coming from? Uh, you and me. It's coming from you. And, and me. you. It's coming from higher taxes. You know, inflation's going up right now. The The... the just our system right now is in a is in a mess. It's a big train wreck happening right now. Think, think about it. We're in thirty two trillion dollars worth of debt as a nation. Most people can't even fathom that number. Oh, well, you, you think one trillion? You spend a million dollars per day, it would take you thirty one thousand years to hit a trillion. Well, like you said, they can't fathom yeah, that. that. Doesn't even it's make a sense. trillion, right? Yeah. So it just sounds big. It's really big. Yeah. Um, so when we think about it, is what are the banks really doing? It's, you know, bailouts. Everybody's saying, oh, it's the crash. It's going to send us back to the Great Depression. Uh, is it like 2008? Different circumstances. Yeah. More regulation. Sim- similar result, though. Similar result. Similar yeah. result. Yeah. So so what ha- ultimately what happened, and we'll, we'll, we'll break it down a little bit more, but ultimately what happened, Mark, is uh, when we stick our money into the banks, what happens is it doesn't sit in a magical vault waiting Correct. for us, right? Yeah. So they take it, and within microseconds, they loan it out. Wait, you mean like all these movies I watch with the big vault and the millions of dollars of stacked dollar bills stay in the gold and silver? That's when, not real? When's the last time you heard of a bank robbery taking place? Uh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they're just going to get a lot of IOUs Listen, in the drawer. They even deny the bank robbers. They deny you coming in, you <laughs> rob that bank. They're going to say, I'm sorry, we Come back in 24 hours. <laughs> That's it. We got to order it for you. Yeah, yeah. Come back on Wednesday. For sure, right? yeah. So ultimately what happens is they take our money, they create something called financial velocity. It just doesn't sit there. So within a microsecond, they loan it out. And they put some in investments, okay? Yeah. So they loan out 50% of it. Credit cards, auto loans, mortgages. Gotcha. Now they're making 1,100 to 1,400% and they're giving us what? The breadcrumb, 0.03 to 0.06%. If anything, yeah. The other 50%, they're sticking in two different places. They're sticking in life insurance and they're really? sticking in treasury bonds. Hmm. Okay. Now, this is this is what happened and the reason why there was a run on the bank. So they're getting in treasury bonds that are, let's say they got in treasury bonds two or three years ago. Hmm. Well, what happens is they got in at 2% treasury bonds. Right. Let's say they were five-year treasury bonds, 10-year treasury bonds. And they have a maturity period, right? Correct. And then the feds are increasing the interest rate, mm. which means the type of treasury bonds they have is going down. Because they have the longer term, correct? The longer For term. For the most part, yeah. But everybody's saying, hey, with high inflation, high interest, high taxes, I need more money out of the bank. So the run on the bank is more withdrawals. Mm. So in this situation with Silicon Valley was, let's say the treasury bonds were worth about a hundred and. 20 billion. Okay. Well, what happened is they had to sell their bonds short of maturity. Okay. Because they, so, they didn't wait the whole in, whole correct. length, correct? So, so do you think people's going to buy them at face value? Mm-hmm. Or do you think they got to sell it at a discount? They're going to sell them at a discount. So take a big about, loss. Correct. They had about 120 billion worth, but they sold them at 100 billion. 
Wow. That 20 billion, that should have been profit for them, but the run on the bank, mm. now they can't pay out the the, the bank wow. clients, the customers. Wow. How is that even legal? I don't even understand that. You know, what, what Jesse's talking about is is called fractional reserve banking. Uh, we did a couple videos on that and on TikTok, YouTube, you should definitely check it out. But that, that's exactly what he's talking about is when you put in $1,000, they're taking 90% of that, loaning it out, severing, you know, nine different ways, making money, giving you the scraps. But the, the weird part is you would think that banks are supposed to have a reserve and they're supposed to hold on to a little bit of that money. For many, many years, for decades, it was about 10%. And did you know in 2020, during the heat of the pandemic, they passed a regulation where they brought that 10% down to 0%. Did you know that? And so the banks were not required at that time after 2020 to keep any reserve in the banks. They didn't have to keep anything. They could bring their their books down to zero, which means they would loan 100% of their assets out. 100% of their deposits would go out. That should be illegal, man. That's That's absolutely crazy. How are you supposed to build an economy when you're taking money and just throwing it at the wall, hoping to get a return? Well, and look what's happening right now. Well, Silicon Valley Bank, they operate different than your average mom and pop or your average bank. Yeah. So they're more for like startup tech, uh, gotcha. tech companies and, and they work with corporations, not necessarily individuals, but corporations and companies. And uh, a basic – bank is where they where you and I it's, it's assets versus liabilities money coming in is assets money coming out is liabilities so as long as their assets coming in are more than the liabilities this is why they give you higher interest rate on certificate of deposits and then they put one year three years five years ten years because that money It's not going anywhere. That's an asset for them and they can loan that money out. But like you said, fractional reserve banking is where they create money out of thin air. You put in a thousand, they're loaning out 10,000, even Mm. though it's not there. So it's, but you have access to your money anytime you want. Yeah. So I bet a lot of people are wondering like how, like, did they know or did anybody else know that SBB bank was was going under was there was there indicators well the signature bank CEO put out 3.5 million worth of stock a couple of days before wow so you think they know and I heard a couple of the executives also did that for the actual bank correct they were drawing their they were they were selling their shares you know that's what happened in 2020 remember we did we had the flash crash in 2020 the stock market dropped 40 percent in 22 mm-hmm. days you you had a, a lot of these CEOs and presidents of companies they cast out billions of dollars worth of stock yeah. right before our December, January of 2019. Hmm. And then the flash crash happened wow. March 13th. Wow. I looked up a little bit of a timeline. Let me give you a breakdown of Let's this timeline. It. So in in December 2022, mm-hmm. uh, a New York banker at a large financial institution started getting calls from startup founders asking to open uh, open different accounts. Okay. So these were companies that were already working with SVB. They kind of knew something was happening. So this other financial institution was getting calls. That's when uh, these bankers realized that SVB was losing money at that point. Okay. So let's fast forward a little bit. In January of 2023, SVB reported a $4.5 billion loss in the fourth quarter of 2022. Okay. Okay, SEC at that point accused SVB, a lot of acronyms right now, of inflating its revenue. So they were puffing up its books, they were manipulating it, they were using, I guess is what they called um, exotic uh, exotic tools or exotic ways to sure. look at their numbers and whatnot. So, th- so there were some kind of red flags happening. In February of 2023, SVB failed to raise $10 billion in new capital from fr- private vest- investors. Mm-hmm. So these investors were digging in the in the in the details of the bank, and they were seeing that this companies have some red flags. So they're not wanting to invest. They're not wanting gotcha. to put money into their into their funds. So a few lawsuits happened. Lawsuits from the shareholders. The shareholders accused SVB Bank of mismanagement, and there was some stuff going on there. March 9th, which is this month, two thousand twenty three, SVB disclosed that it had received a cease and desist order from 
the FDIC or from the Federal Reserve for violating capital adequacy and liquidity requirements. So the government's now looking into the bank and, and telling them they need to cease and desist until they get some things in order. So I worked for a marketing company that used to cater to credit unions back in the day. And a credit union, if they were, if their books weren't you know, like we, when we have the auditors for the different insurance companies, they're audited by three different, you know, several right. different outside auditors. Well, they have auditors for banks and financial institutions as well. If these auditors find that their books are questionable or they're, they're, they're losing money, they're going to cause them to cease and desist. That basically means all hands stand down. You cannot do any more business mm-hmm. until you get this fixed because they don't want to put the customer in a, in a bind. So the Federal Reserve sent a cease and desist on March 9th. March 10th was when like the big news started coming out. SVB stock price plunged 80%. Ouch. Bro, if you look, if you look on the market, you look at like Market Watch or like you know Seeking Alpha or whatever, these different market uh, websites, you're gonna see like a a 80% drop, like straight down. Yep, absolutely. absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. And then on March 11th, which is when it all kind of hit the fan, SVB collapsed after failing to secure emergency funding from the government and other banks. They were calling everybody trying to get money, pull, pull funds together, and it didn't work out. The California Department of Financial uh, Institutions closed the bank down. They put the locks on the doors. They said, you guys are done. You guys are going under. And that's when the FDIC kicks in and kind of says, all right, hey, we're going to take over from here. And then I then I just heard recently that uh, Biden said that all of the executives of the company are now out of a job. They fired them all. Did you know that? Yeah, a lot of those executives came from Freddie Mac and and, um, Lehman Brothers. Can can you believe that? (laughs) Can you believe that? I just saw something as well. I forget what the guy's name is. This was the SVP. SVB is the largest bank failure since 2008. Yeah, and and they were the 16th largest bank in in the the country. And you took those leaders and just injected them into this bank, and now can you believe that insider trading type stuff happens? What are the coincidences of that? One of the executives was Joseph Gentile, who was a former executive for Lehman Brothers. Come on, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. I just uh, found that too coincidental, man. It's crazy, but it's for, for. to answer your question, because I know what's going through your mind right now is, do you need to go get all your money out of the bank? No, you don't. Have, don't do that, you, please. You don't need to. Very few people have over a quarter million dollars in the bank, right? So you don't need to run to the bank and get all your money out. Please, especially if you bank with Chase. I like, I, like, <laughs> I want my money to be protected, right? So don't, don't panic. Stay calm. Anything, remember, it's FDIC insured. So anything under 250, the government will give you your money back. But th- this is dealing with more corporations. But what, what I'm terrified of is this is just the start of a downward spiral because right. if it was these tech startup companies, remember the tech yeah. technology has been booming, booming. Over, over the past couple of years. Yeah. These apps, AI. Probably the last decade. And if these small businesses were putting their money into this bank and now they just lost all their money, yeah. like what's going to happen with the small businesses? Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to – this it's a good segue into this because – you and I come from the, the cryptocurrency and yes. uh, the crypto, uh, cryptocurrency whole arena of things. Yep, and yep. it was very interesting. I came across this article. It said Coinbase, mm. which is the number one place where That's America the purchases yeah. their uh, That's the big dog. That's the gateway into crypto. Everybody has a Coinbase app, Coinbase app and account. Right. And that's how you start buying your crypto. Absolutely. And if you don't, just let me know. Yeah. Right? Uh, Coinbase, Celsius, Paxos disclosed wow. that they have funds in Signature Bank. Wow. Upwards of so Coinbase says right here they have 250 million. Paxo says they have 250 million. That's insane. Crypto.com has zero. Really? Has zero. How'd they escape that one, man? They, they, <laughs> Maybe they knew something. They're putting their money somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a tether, which is equivalent to cash. If you don't want to right. lose, tether is like you the put your money in tether. It's like it's pegged to the dollar. It always stays at one dollar. Doesn't go up or down. That's like the safe haven for if you Correct. want to get out of crypto, put it in the tether. And how much did they have in there? Zero dollars. Okay. Well, at least we know Tether's safe. But it's uh, coin, Coinbase. And, wow. and just to let you know, since the banks are going over there, remember, extreme fear and panic is mm. what shifts the market. So right now, right. Bitcoin's up, what, 13 14%. Why? From 19000 to 24000 Why? Why do you think? Because people, people are, are, oh, it's a run on the bank. Yeah. Guys, stop. 
stop listening to the thoughts and opinions of other people who have no no knowledge of a situation. It's um, it's uh, it's the they we call it FUD: fear, uncertainty, and doubts. So remember, we're scared of the unknown. Mm. And if everybody you surround yourself with is talking about, oh, it's the collapse, the digital dollar, the Fed coin, you need to go get all your money at the bank. Oh, what you going to do with it? Stick it in your mattress? You're going to carry it around with you? Like, That's stop, crazy. stop, guys. Yeah. Please, please, yeah. please. Well, speaking of crypto, there were actually a couple other banks that recently shut down as well. Did you know that? So we got, obviously, SVB, which was Silicon Valley Bank. Signature Bank was mm-hmm. another one. Yep. Signature Bank uh catered to a lot of cryptocurrency companies including celsius and binance and blockchain and coinbase there were a couple couple banks that were involved with them uh but also silvergate silvergate was another crypto friendly bank that a lot of these tech startups these crypto Mm -hmm. tech startups took all of their money and, and put it into banks right and certain banks like chase will not allow people that invest heavily in crypto to be a part of their organization, their, their, their institution. So there's some banks that avoid crypto altogether, but there's some banks that welcome it. And, and silver, uh, I think I said silver Lake, but silver gate was one of the big banks. They went insolvent. They got shut down as well. Now the government swears that they're not going to, no, they're, they're not going to bail out mm-hmm. these banks. Oh. So it means they're not going to give money to the banks to keep going but they are going to try to protect the depositors and at least give them back their money. But there's also companies, did you know this? Um, I just heard this. Companies like Shopify Mm -hmm. have people on their platform that still need to pay bills and pay employees. They said, we'll open up basically a uh, line of credit for you in order for you to make payroll. Sure. Don't worry about any paperwork. We'll figure that out later. But if you got hit with the SVP crisis here, let's help you. And and that's what Patrick Bed David said in his podcast today. He said, capitalism at its finest is when others see opportunity, when other people fall to pick up that those pieces and to kind of take take over where they left off. And that's what's happening right now with a lot of these banks. If they position themselves right. beforehand. Right. It's a lot of people are going to continue doing the same things that they did before. And then the opportunity is going to pass them by as well. Right. So you figure like, let's talk about retirement real quick, where if we know that the stock market dropped 58.67% in 2008, your 401k was cut in half to 201ks. Why would you continue putting into a product where you're knowing that there's high amount of volatility in it? Right. So now people, they lost 23% last year. It's, it's your own fault. You, yeah. you did it to yourself because you didn't change. You didn't, you didn't diversify your taxes. Mm-hmm. You didn't diversify your portfolio. And now guess what? It's coming back around. Yeah. And then, and then once again, as, as I know, I quote this quite often, but it's the truth is the further back in the past you look, the further forward that you can see success leaves clues and we've got to follow the clues. And we live in a very cyclic world, so it, it, it's going to go full circle. If it happened then, it's going to happen again. And, sure. And the reason why is because man's in power. Yeah. And as always, man's in power. We like to repeat ourselves. Unfortunately, Do, to I our mean, demise. Exactly. You would like to think that uh, <laughs> that, that we would learn from our lessons. Yeah, yeah I but, think I think a generation may learn, but two three generations they don't follow daddy's footprints. You know. Well, and, and just remember, this is a global economy, guys. This isn't just America. This is a global economy. Uh, but we're going to talk about that on another episode. Yeah. But but when we're t- you just said generations. Yeah. Did you know there there's a word? Because, you know, we, we say it is, it's so cliche now that you can become anybody you want in this life. Yeah. Uh, Napoleon Hill wrote in Thinking Grow Rich years ago that if the mind of man can conceive and believe, he can therefore achieve. And like, me? Nobody's ever told me that before. Right. Uh, but there's, there's a word for it. What's that word? It's called transitional character. Interesting. And it's scientifically proven that it only takes one person and a family to completely change the history of the last name. Mm. It says right here, transitional character is the person in the bloodline who chooses to heal, to put in the work. Hmm. And then in a single generation is able to change the course of the lineage. Wow. One person can do that. One person. That's all it takes. Interesting. You think about like your grandparents and your grandparents, grandparents, if you even know who your great, great, great grandpa was. Most people don't. Most people only know their father and maybe their grandfather. I don't. And I'm OK with that. It just yeah. means he didn't do anything of significance right. to be remembered. At by the end of the I'm day. I'm going to make sure I 
I'm that one person. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think we're in a generation where we're so fed up with the mess that our parents left us in. You know, they loved us. They did the best that they could. But that generation left us in a little bit of a kind of confusion, a confusion mess, right? Absolutely. And so I think we're at the place where we're wanting to change our entire generation. I know that's something I definitely want to do. I didn't know there was actually a word to that. Yep. Transitional character. character. That's it's, interesting. It's scientifically proven. Um it's by, it was a study, uh, study, what's the lady's name? Dr. Give me one second, I'll, I'll find it. Cause she, she's gotta be, she's gotta be known. There was a, a university that did a study too. I think Brigham Young University did okay. a study on this. Um, I don't, I don't have the doctor's name, but I know they did the study and they have, they have a whole bunch of different things that, you know, like, um, strategy to use in order to be that change right yes. and i know you were also looking up some of that as well her her, her name is uh carlfred broderick 1988 mm. yep. she coined that term yep interesting transitional character what are some of the things you can do to ensure that you become that transitional character in your life so that your kids grow up differently than you grew up you just stand up and say, I'm going to whoop everybody's ass. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take their lunches. I'm going to dominate. I'm yeah. a winner. I'm, yeah. I'm not a loser. Like yeah. it's, it all comes with a belief. And, and as you mentioned, Mark, is our parents couldn't teach us what they didn't know. Mm. So they passed on a blueprint that they learned from our parents or from our grandparents. Yeah. And what, Great Depression, mm -hmm. 1929? Right. Uh, maybe, maybe, well, for us, because we're 39, 40, I think you're like 23. Yeah. So our grandparents are, what, born in the 40s? Yeah. So our great-grandparents. My, no, my grandfather was born in 1916. He's no longer here with us, but so he, he was born. the Depression. He's 16. He went through the 20s. Uh, yeah, he was, he was during the Great Depression. Hmm. And that's interesting because – you know, when you, you live a life and you only know that life and then you teach your kids that life that you lived, mm -hmm. my parents grew up kind of floundering and not really, you know, becoming great because they didn't know, they didn't have the principles, the skills, they didn't have those strategies to use, but Man, what are I, our kids going to do? Something completely different. I wish that would have been a lot, like, I wish I would have had like these questions that I have now for my grandfather because yeah. growing up, I think my grandfather was born in 1917, 1918. Okay. Yeah. But he passed away when I was 15, 16. Gotcha. I could just imagine sitting with him now and yeah. truly asking him and learning the stories. Yeah. And, man. Like, what did you go through? What did you experience? Like, what was it that helped you get through that time? Most people would want to just wave that white flag and give up if they're going through financial hardship. I sat you know? with a client yesterday, 77 years old. Mm. He says, uh, oh, you served in the military? I said, yes, sir, 16 years. He said, I was in Vietnam. I hmm. said, oh, I'd love to take you to dinner. Oh, one day. man. I'd love to take you to dinner. I yeah. just want to hear some stories because those those guys had it. Oh, yeah. But this is one of the Vietnam vets that actually has a nice pension. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, he, he, he was smart with his money. He got life insurance on all his kids and all his grandkids. And I was like, I, I want to act like. That's smart. How did he do that? But everybody else didn't. Right, like, right. Like, like, who did he? The who, who did he talk to? Who did he have in Correct. his life that shared those principles, those strategies with him? Yeah. Okay, because that's all it is: is somebody passing that knowledge down. It's not a generational curse. It's just a lack of knowledge yeah. that's not being passed down. Whether it be because they didn't know, they didn't know what questions to ask, they didn't know where to go to find the information, mm. or maybe they just. Let let it pass them by. I patted them on the shoulder and said, here I am. And they said, hey, that's a scam. That's a Ponzi scheme. My family doesn't want any part of that. And it just went to the next family. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. So, but I'll tell you one thing that, that's, that weighs heavy on my heart. I was here at the office last night until about 1130. It's everybody out, outside of these doors. Because we wake up this morning and banks are failing. Mm -hmm. People are scared. We've seen this happen way too often. Yep. Uh, we just went through what two and a half years of a pandemic. Yeah. We're locked down. Locked inside small the doors. Yep. Closed. Uh, people lost a lot of money. We're in a recession, yeah. right? Or 
You know, the government changes the definition of some things. Oh, yeah. Um, all the people that said, you got to take the vaccine, now now they're being sued. But <laughs> it, it's, it's the craziest it's thing crazy. that's taking place. But people need hope. People need to know that, hey, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Not just yet. Not just yet. But we need hope. We need knowledge. We need, we need to know where to go to. Mm. And I just ask myself, it's like, I have the knowledge. I know what a potential solution is for average, everyday, everyday middle class American mm. to protect their wealth, to grow their wealth, to, to be able to sleep in peace at night. But they've been groomed. And it's been embedded in their mind through our education system to think, feel, yeah. and act a certain way towards things that they're not taught. And they're not taught these strategies. Right. The wealthy are taught these strategies, but middle class America is not. So therefore, it's tough to even get them to listen to you. Yep. So and people then are they, scared. And, and then they're like, whoa, me. Whoa, they're me. scared, yeah. So yeah. I, I'm just looking at our our, our social media comments on there, mm. and I'm like, ah, oh, man, there's – I don't want to call anybody an idiot, right, but right. it's like, how, how like yeah. naive can you be? Right, right. And, and then uh, they wonder why, you know, some people wonder why they're in this hardship. They're in this bind in the life. If you keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results, but never achieving those results, that's the definition of insanity. And I think insanity. our society right now is in a state of insanity. Yes. The, the financial system, the government is – they're all insane. But middle class America right now, because we've been taught and ingrained to go to school, get a job, work for 40 hours for 40 years for 40 percent of your income, we're, we're in this rat race. That's why they call it a rat race. Yeah. Rats are running this, this wheel over Absolutely. and over and over hoping they're going to get somewhere and they never end up getting anywhere. And we're trying to bring hope to middle class America, not just because – you know, we sell insurance and we sell financial strategies and, and principles and, you know, we're bringing value to our to our clients. But we're tr really trying to teach people to break out of that broken system, mm -hmm. to break out of that broken mentality. And, you know, I really appreciated the uh, this transitional character that you were talking about, um, because I think there's some strategy that people could use in order to be that change in their life. We, we talk about it with our agents. Sure. We're talking about it out, out in social media. We're talking about it in our group on social media as well, on our Facebook group. Um, there's a couple things that you can do. And then and then we can kind of transition into some final thoughts and, and you tell me where you want to go. But a couple of simple things to do for being that transitional character in your life or your family's life is obviously develop a vision for yourself. you got to know who you are, right? Absolutely. One of the things you've taught us is, listen – you are better than you grew up. You're better than your circumstances. You're better, you're better than what you came out of, right? Yes. Manifestation, speaking positivity, reading the books, surrounding yourself with the people, and what's the last the events one? That you the events that you attend. So developing a vision for yourself, building a supportive system, a support system, relationships. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why we moved to Nash uh, from Nashville to Dallas was to be around these guys and to be around this office of 100 to 200 agents mm -hmm. that are freaking want to win for their lives That's and it. for their families. So building a supportive relationship and, and community around you, be deliberate about making change. Mm -hmm. Like you say every day, get up and choose to be different, yep. right? Choose, live the life now with a little bit of sacrifice for the long-term reward, right? Sure. And then the last one was celebrate family rituals around you. Those are just a couple ones Distinctive that I can think of. Rituals, yeah. Yep. yeah. So it, it's, there's a couple other ones. So when it comes to transitional character, I think you can even split it off. Not in a, You're going to have to be intentional about it, yeah. but you can split it off to say, okay, what type of change can I make with my personal family, mom, right. dad, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and then professional family, business life? There you go. Because especially if you're building a business, you got – People that aren't your blood looking up to you sure. that you're guiding and helping change in their life as well. Yeah. So you never know the impact that you're going to make. Um, our CEO, Patrick Bad David, he wrote a book August 18th of 2020 called Your Next Five Moves. And in that book, he says most people are focused on their 15th move when they should be focused on their first move. And that, that's the first, that's number one that you just said about transitional character. Do you remember what that was? Yeah, develop a vision. Develop a vision. Who do you want to become in this life? Not what your mom, your dad, your auntie, your uncle wants you to become, but who do you want to become? And once you're able to answer that question, then you just have to uh, follow it up with a massive amount of directed action, laser-focused action. Remember, remember when we were in grade school, Mark, 
And we used to take the magnifying glass. I don't know if you ever did it, but during the solar eclipse, you know, we'd all go outside on the yeah. on the black top, and we take the magnifying glass yeah. and we'd burn like some ants and yeah, stuff like that. Ants, yeah. So you would have to hold it there for a certain amount of time for that sunlight to to start burning the ant. But if you moved it around, it would never get hot enough. Same thing with a laser. And that's the way our focus has to be in everything that we do. Very intentional and laser focused. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. What are a couple other things that you found that can that are helping you transition into being that transitional character? Number one is prayer. Uh, coming, so close, want, coming closer to God. Yeah. It's, um, that's probably number one. That's probably yeah. top top of our list. R- realizing this world is is uh, every breath we take is a gift. Yeah. Every day of life is a gift, and we have to make sure we use our gift for the greater good. And it's, it's, it's not about me. It's that we were, if we truly believe that we were put here to win and succeed and thrive, not just survive, then we have to use all the gifts that God gives us and help other people, help because we're all God's children, right? And it's it goes back to the scripture, parables of the, um, um, the, talents. the talents. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, well done, my good and faithful servants. And you were faithful with the little. Now I'll make you ruler over correct. much. Correct. Yeah. And, and that's that's where I see a lot of people. They're focused on the scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I don't want to lose. I got one. I I'm going to hide it. That's it. Because yeah. I don't want to lose it. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, you know what? I'm going to go out into the world. and I'm going to multiply it mm-hmm. uh, for the greater good of God's kingdom. Yeah. And, and that's what you and I are focused on with our team here in this business this industry is kingdom builders, kingdom entrepreneurs, kingdom, kingdom mindset, influencers. Kingdom mindsets, yeah. Just having a kingdom mindset. And um, that, that I think that's where, you, you know, we were at church. I believe it was at church the other day. He, he was like, you know, he got first Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That just means that, that they were the first church. And then and you then got, got second Baptist. Second ba- but the second Baptist has more people going to the first. Oh, I don't want to be second. Why are you going to, to second first. Baptist? You can be going to first. Yeah. That, that's, that's it. So so it's different denominations, yeah. but it's one kingdom. So we're not focused on a denomination. We're right. focused on kingdom influencers, kingdom builders. Right. And, it's the same uh, thing with like the race. What color of your skin? I don't care about the color of your skin. I only care about one color. What's that? The color green. The color green, baby. Money. And I don't and, care uh, about one race. And one race. That's the human race. The human race. That's, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm telling you guys, it's, we let our government use old war strategies. Yeah. And it's the strategy of distraction. Distraction. Looky, right. looky, looky over here while we're doing this over here. Then and, divide and conquer. And I would even say, with even with this bank, I honestly feel that part of me, they knew it was coming mm. and it's just probably just look the not, other way. Look not, the, you look the other way. It's not woke America. It's wake the hell up America. Oh shoot. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying like, yeah, it's, it's like woke America is real. Uh, I'm woke. I'm yeah. woke. No, yeah. you need to wake up yeah. and um, really see through the smoke. Yeah. It, you know, I just, I pray for my children, my kids growing up. Sure. That they're going to not have to deal with the same garbage that we're growing up in and with the with the government. And I don't know if that's going to be a, you know, like be true or not, because I think it could get worse before it gets better. And the, I think that's the, what we're seeing right the now. The only way that's going to change, Mark, is if we're the change. Right. So what we focus on is we recruit, we train, we develop leaders in this industry. Because if, if we truly believe 80% of the stress a human being carries with them is financial stress, and we're able to educate them on how money works and how money grows, teach them the rules of the money game, we're going to help them relieve 15, 20, 30% of that stress. They're going to be better mothers, better fathers, better human beings. And that's how we change the world. So if we want something done in this government, if we want something done in the world, we have to first be the change. But in order to do that, we have to attract other people that have the same belief that we believe sure. in. So that's the same thing. Um, it, it all goes down to beliefs. And, and you hear me say this all the time, Martin Luther King. There's two great men that walked the earth. The number one was Jesus Christ. And the second was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He got 250,000 people on a hot July afternoon in 1969 they didn't have YouTube, ad, uh, YouTube ads and Facebook ads and, right. and radio commercials. They had word of mouth advertisement. Mm-hmm. 
And word got around the entire country from all races, from all religions, from all demographic backgrounds, from all beliefs. And they believed in what he believed in. And it was a unified nation. And they they all showed up from across. Uh, I don't know if it was horse and carriage or I what. Don't know, man. But uh, but they showed up in Washington, D.C. Yeah. In, a, in a hot July afternoon yeah. because they believed in what he believed in. So my question to you is, what do you believe in? And do you believe in it so much so that you can recruit other people into your belief system? Because everybody's being sold. Yeah. Either you're either getting a higher level of belief or you're, you're going to be recruited into sure. a lower level of belief. Sure. But that's your decision. That's, that's, you're selling yourself every day, whether you can or can't do it. That's right. Right. Whether you will succeed or whether you won't succeed, you're selling yourself a vision, a dream. And it could be a good dream or a bad dream. You know? So while we're talking about the banks, you know, one of our coaches, Matt Sapala, he says it doesn't matter what happens on Wall Street. You got to pay attention to what happens on your street. Don't matter what happens in the White House. What matters is what happens in your house. That's it. That's it. Hundred <laughs> percent, man. Yeah. That's that's yeah. all it is. It's, yeah. Uh, because we're too focused on what we can't control. Like we can't control the bank. We, right. We can't control any of that. Can't control that. Yep. No. So, no. but what we can control is how we react, how we respond, how yeah. we move forward and pivot and adjust. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, guys, if you found value in this podcast, leave a comment down below. Join in the conversation. And if this is shared on, on your social media, drop some comments as well. Encourage your friends and family to join the conversation well and, and let's build this community up. Uh, you know, we like talking about things that are happening in the in the economy right now. We like at least giving you a, a, the lowdown and the scoop on what's happening in the latest and greatest, uh, good or bad in the in the economy. But we also like talking about character and things that, yes. that will help you leave a legacy and a brighter future for the next generation. So that's it. If you, yeah. if you haven't subscribed yet, go in and smash that subscribe button and uh, click that notification tab to be notified every time that we release new content. Yeah. We're releasing that, what, what, two, two, just about two, two videos, of content per, just about two, twice a week. Yeah. Yep, that, that's awesome. And, and yeah. then help us grow the community by sharing this message out. Yeah. Because the only way we can reach the masses, masses is with you. Yeah. And we're going to be continuing to report on this SVB debacle as yes. well. And we're, we're just waiting and seeing over the next couple of days, weeks, months, oh, how don't. this is going to play out. Because this is one of two ways that it could happen. It can either, you know, just another day in the office, we're going to fix this and keep going. Or it will spiral out of control, yep. you know, and we need to be there to be the, the light in the situation to shine hope into this dark world. And, and I know I shouldn't do this, but before we go, there was an interview with a congressman. It, it, it was like they were in court, congressman and and Jerome Powell. Yeah. And Jerome Powell, he was he was sitting on the hot seat and they said, so you're willing to do whatever it takes to get interest or the inflation back down to 2%. Whatever it takes. He said, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. So the congressman said, so, you know, in order to get inflation back down to 2%, the unemployment, unemployment. rate is going to have to go from 3% to 10%. Are you aware of that? He said, yes. So you're telling me that you're okay with hundreds of thousands of Americans losing their job. He said, well, and it started beating around the bush a lot of people are about to be unemployed yeah yeah but we'll save that for the next like episode. i said it's about to be worse it's going to get worse before it gets better we'll, we'll save that for the next episode. we'll save that for the next episode <laughs> make sure you follow us on social media and uh until the next podcast that's it we'll see Go you there and live a life of significance that's make it. somebody smile today guys. god bless man. Appreciate, appreciate it. your brother man.